Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be describing some key points of secretiotitis media and then I'll be discussing some questions uh, from this topic that may be asked in the competitive exams like NEET and NEXT. So secretiotitis media, it has various synonyms like serous otitis media, uh, secret otitis media, mucoid otitis media, glue ear, non suppurative otitis media, and otitis media with effusion. So, all these terminolo uh, terminologies are used for SOM, that is, secret otitis media. So, here I will be talking about the key points. I will not be going into the very detail of the topic, only the important points that will help us in. Uh, answering the multiple choice questions. So it is a collection of the sterile fluid in the middle ear cleft. We know that the middle ear cleft includes middle ear, eustachian tube, attic, entrum and mastoid ear cells. So collection of sterile fluid in middle ear cleft is the feature. It is commonly seen in school going children. So in the questions also sometimes this word is mentioned school going child. Then we should uh, get an idea that it may be secret otitis media. Uh, rarely it can also be seen in adults, but commonly in school going children. Broadly, there are two mechanisms of this fluid collection. One is the malfunctioning of the eustachian tube. The reason can be any pathology in the nasopharynx like uh, adenoids in children or any malignancy in adults. Then tonsils in children, enlarged tonsils, or if there is any pathology in the nose like rhinitis, sinusitis, polyps. So all these things will cause the blockage of the eustachian tube, which will create negative pressure in the middle ear and subsequently it will lead to uh, collection of fluid in the middle ear. Another etiology can be increased secretory activity of the middle ear mucosa. So this secretory activity can be because of allergy or any infection from uh, uh, virus such as adenovirus or rhinovirus. So these two pathologies will lead to collection of fluid in the middle ear. There is conductive hearing loss in secret otitis media and it is a most common symptom. So mostly the child presents with hearing loss and this hearing loss of, is of generally mild degree that is in the range of 20 to 40 decibels. So when we examine the tempering membrane in such patients, it may be seen as a dull tempering membrane that, that is there is loss of light reflex because there is collection of fluid in the middle ear. The color may vary. It may be yellow, green or blue. Then uh, depending on the stage of the disease, the tempering membrane will be either retracted or it may be bulged. So initially there is a creation of negative pressure in the middle ear which leads to the retraction of the tempering membrane. But then later on, when the fluid collects, the tempering membrane bulges. The mobility of the tempering membrane is decreased. That can be checked by either Valsalva or by Siegelization. And sometimes air bubbles or even the fluid level is seen behind the intact tempering membrane when the tempering membrane is thin. So these may be the otoscopic findings in a patient with secret otitis media. The tuning fork test will reveal a conductive type of hearing loss. That is, Rene test will be negative. Weber will be lateralized to the affected ear. If both ears are affected, then Weber will be lateralized to the one which is having more conductive hearing loss. And uh, absolute bone conduction test will be normal. Audiogram, that is pure tone audiogram, will also relieve, uh, reveal a conductive type of hearing loss. That is, there will be air bone gap seen in the audiogram, but again, it will be of mild degree. Impedance audiometry, it is an important investigation to diagnose secret otitis media. And impedance audiometry will reveal a type B curve. So that will, these all things we'll see in, uh, when we discuss the questions. And uh, as the fluid can also collect in the mastered air cells, Sometimes X-ray mastoid, Schuller's view or even a CT scan, HRCT temporal bone may be required which will show the collection of fluid in the air cells that is seen as clouding of the air cells. So these are the some uh, investigations which are done for secret otitis media.
the treatment the most important thing is that we should remove the causative factor that is in a child if the tonsils are enlarged or adenoids are enlarged we should manage these things first if there is any pathology in the nose like rhinitis sinusitis polyps deviated septum then that should be addressed first and the patient should be uh, encouraged to improve the middle ear aeration by performing valsalva we may require to do eustachian tube catheterization and he should be asked to chew the gum because when we, when when he'll chew it the eustachian tube op will open and it will improve the aeration so middle ear aeration is one of the important uh, modalities in the treatment of uh, som then medical management includes antihistaminics we know that it is it may be allergic in origin decongestants they can be topical decongestants like oxy and xylometazole in drops nasal drops or systemic decongestants uh, role of antibiotic is not uh, very uh, known for this disease because we say that it is sterile but sometimes antibiotics are also given to prevent the uh, prophylax prophylaxis to prevent the super headed infection and then surgical treatment includes myringotomy which may be done with or without grommet insertion and if the fluid is collected in the mastoid air cells then the patient may require cortical mastoidectomy if all the above measures have failed the initial treatment is always medical and this treatment should be continued for at least 3 months before going for surgical intervention now the questions that may be asked from this topic in the com various competitive exams they can be either recall type or problem based that is case based or image based recall type means directly they will ask something related to the disease and you need to answer uh, depending on your memory and then problem and image based so we will uh, see some questions of each type and then we will try to further understand this topic so starting with the questions now uh, i think this is the simplest form of a question that can be asked from this topic and it is a simple recall type that that is you need to remember that which type of curve do we get in secretory uteritis media in tympanometry now in tympanometry there are various types of curves a as ad b and c but uh, we know that in secretory uteritis media since there is fluid in the middle ear so we get type b curve so the correct answer is b type of curve so this is a simple question a recall type of question then moving to a next variety myringotomy is done for all except so here uh, it is asked that uh, out of these four conditions which condition does not require myringotomy now acute suppurative otitis media myringotomy is putting an incision in the tympanic membrane to drain the middle ear fluid or to equilibrate the pressure of the middle ear with that of the surrounding so first option is acute suppurative otitis media here also there is a fluid in the middle ear and when the tympanic membrane is bulging sometimes we need to do myringotomy to remove the middle ear fluid then secretory otitis media again there is fluid which can be removed by myringotomy aero otitis media option third now here what happens because of the rapid descent either in the flight or rapid sea diving the there is rapid change in the atmospheric pressure and the eustachian tube is not able to equilibrate that pressure so for that the there is creation of negative pressure in the middle ear which leads to the retraction of the tympanic membrane and in this condition also myringotomy is required so that the pressure becomes normal then the fourth option is chronic otitis media now chronic otitis media already there is either a perforation or there is a cholestatoma so here we do not need to uh, open the middle ear to drain the fluid there is no fluid in the middle ear first of all secondly all, already the tympanic membrane most of the times it is perforated so the first three are the indications of myringotomy and the fourth one that is chronic otitis media uh, here myringotomy is not required so the correct answer will be chronic otitis media now something regarding myringotomy as can be seen in this figure this is the schematic figure of a right tympanic membrane here we can see that two types of myringotomy incisions are shown one is a other one is b 
Now this A incision, it is present in the anterior inferior quadrant and it is radial. So this type of myringotomy incision, it is for secretory otitis media. That is a radial incision present in the anterior inferior quadrant. Another incision we see here is B type. Uh, now uh, here we can see that this is circumferential incision and it is in the posterior inferior quadrant. So a circumferential incision in the posterior inferior quadrant is generally given for acute suppurative otitis media. So a question can be framed from this part also that which type of incision is used in which type of disease. So this needs to be remembered. Further in myringotomy here we can see that again uh, two types of incisions are given. One is in, in the anterior superior and other one is in the anterior inferior quadrant. Now when two incisions are put in anterior superior and anterior inferior quadrants, this is called beer can principle. The reason is said that sometimes the fluid is very thick which cannot be drained from a single incision. So we uh, put two incisions in the anterior superior and the anterior inferior quadrants. Now, one important point to note here is that we see that anterior superior quadrant we can put an incision, anterior inferior we can put an incision, posterior inferior we can put, put an incision, but we should never put an incision in the posterior superior quadrant, in this quadrant. We should never put a myringotomy incision. The reason is that important structures are located medial to it, like the incidiostipital joint, the facial nerve, the oval window. So those structures may be damaged. That is why a myringotomy incision is never put in the posterior superior quadrant. Another question, uh, it can be said as a problem based plus image based combined. So what is it? A four year old child was brought to ENT OPD with complaints of not able to hear properly in school. The autoscopic picture is as shown below most probable diagnosis is. Now here from this question we need to uh, see or catch the specific uh, terms that is presenting complaint is decreased hearing and the patient is a school going child. So as I told you that this school word should give us an indication or a hint that this is secret otitis media and further to add to our diagnosis they have given the figure of uh, the tempering membrane of that patient. So in figure we can see that there is our air bubbles seen and fluid and air bubbles are seen and that in drum is intact. It means there is fluid medial to the uh, tempering membrane. The patient is a child presenting with decreased hearing. So secretly otitis media, it is a most common cause of decreased hearing in children and this autoscopic figure is only adding to our diagnosis. So, so the correct answer here is secretory otitis media. Autosclerosis, it is not a disease uh, for uh, of children. And acute otitis media, in acute otitis media, the picture of uh, the tempering membrane, it's not like that. It is red congested bulging tempering membrane generally which is seen in acute rotitis media. The additional symptoms in acute rotitis media will be pain and fever. But here the patient is only complaining of decreased hearing. So uh, most probable diagnosis for this question will be secretory otitis media. Moving to a next question. Now this is again an image based question. The question is identify the procedure. So I have framed this question. Uh, so actually these are two questions. So we'll discuss one by one. Identify the procedure procedure for which the instrument shown below is used. So now first we need to identify this instrument. Now he, this is a tip. It, this is an instrument of this shape. It's a pointed tip. So this is a Politzer myringotome. As the name suggests, it is used for myringotomy and not for myringoplasty or any other surgery, but myringotomy. So the correct answer is myringotomy. Another way of framing this same question is identify the disease for which the instrument shown below is used. And then these three diseases or four diseases may be given. So first again, we need to identify that this is a polyzer myringotome. It is used for myringotomy. Then we need to know that what are the indications of myringotomy. So in the previous questions, I've already told you that secretory otitis media, we require myringotomy, not for autosclerosis 
or Meniere's disease. These are totally different diseases. So the correct answer for this question will be secreti otitis media. The idea is that we should know that this is a Pollitzer's myringotome. So such image based questions may also be asked. Another question is a school going child came to ENT OPD with complaints of fullness of ear. A graph is shown below what is the choice of treatment now two three points to note here is again as I told you the patient is a school going child the complaint is fullness of ear that is maybe there is some fluid in the ear or some mass in the ear which is ca causing fullness in the ear a graph is shown below now here they have not written which graph is this so first we need to know that which graph is this second we need to interpret this graph so this here we can see that on x-axis uh, pressure is plotted in decapascal unit on y-axis milliliter that is compliance is plotted. So this is probably a tympanogram and in tympanogram this black line we can see that it is a flat curve. Here there is no identifiable peak. So this is a flat curve. Now flat curve is seen in type it is, it is called type B curve. So this is an impedance or a tympanogram showing a type B curve. Now we know that type B curve we get when there is fluid in the middle ear like in uh, uh, secretiotitis media and the history also collaborates with it that is the patient is a school going child. So the surgical treatment for secretiotitis media is myringotomy. So this patient will require myringotomy. So here they have uh, they are testing our knowledge of uh, tympanogram so that we should know. So moving to the next question, this is again an image based question. The question says the tube shown below is put in here for all of the following conditions except. Now the, here a small tube is shown. So first we need to identify this. So this is a grommet. Okay. Or also called ventilation tube. Also called tympanostomy tube. So when uh, myringotomy is done, sometimes to keep it keep it open for a long time a grommet is also inserted so one part of the grommet remains in the middle ear and other part in the external ear and it provides a channel for the middle ear fluid to drain out into the external ear so this is called ventilation tube different types of grommets are available Shah grommet, Shefford grommet but in this particular uh, question it says that this grommet is used in all of the following conditions except so first is autosclerosis. Now autosclerosis is a disease where there is fixation of the stapes foot plate. So there is no middle ear fluid to drain. So grommet is not used for uh, this autosclerosis. Other options aerotitis media. Yes, because in aerotitis media sometimes to keep the myringotomy incision open for a long time because uh, the pressure in the middle ear is negative. To equilibrate that pressure we need to insert the grommet sometimes and in serous otitis media also to continuously drain the fluid we need sometimes grommet insertion with myringotomy. So out of these three options autosclerosis is a condition where this tube that is ventilation tube is not used. Now in this question all of the following are true for secreti otitis media except immediate myringotomy is required. So myringotomy is the surgical management for uh, secreti otitis media but uh, the medical management should be continued for at least three months before going for surgical intervention. So immediate myringotomy is not required. Initial there is medical management and then we can plan myringotomy if the medical management fails. So this is incorrect. Let's see the other options. Type T tympanogram. This is correct. Middle ear effusion is sterile. Yes, most of the time it is sterile. And most common cause of deafness in children. Yes, we know that secreti otitis media is the most common cause of mild conductive deafness in children. So the second, third and fourth options are correct. So the only incorrect option here is immediate myringotomy is required. Immediate myringotomy is not required. It is required after the medical management fails. Now another case based or we can say a problem based question is shown here. A child was diagnosed with acute otitis media. After 14 days of antibiotics treatment, there was subsidence of pain, but persistent of deafness. The probable diagnosis is. Now 
we here we should know one thing that uh, one of the etiologies of secretory otitis media is incompletely resolved acute otitis media so whenever a child has a, an attack of acute otitis media and antibiotics are given sometimes the infection goes away so all the signs of the infection that is pain fever they go away but the fluid remains in the middle ear and that fluid becomes sterile but it is a cause of deafness so this child probably has developed now sterile fluid in the middle ear that is secretory otitis media let's see the options autotoxicity 14 days of antibiotics generally it will won't cause uh, autotoxicity because uh, antibiotics are generally uh, aminoglycosides are autotoxic but they are not given as a first line drug for acute otitis media orally so this option is ruled out secretory otitis media most likely this is the correct answer as after 14 days of antibiotic treatment the infection is gone but the fluid is there so a sterile fluid in the middle ear is secretory otitis media then tympanosclerosis again in tympanosclerosis there needs to be needs to be some injury uh, over the tympanic membrane which heals as a sclerosis in autosclerosis again there is no fluid in the middle ear so out of these four options the most probably the correct answer will be secretory otitis media and here we can see that the age of the patient that is a child it matches with our diagnosis autosclerosis is not uh, seen in children so secretory otitis media is the correct answer here another question a 70 years old male patient with right side uh, he presented with a right side hearing loss on otoscopic examination there was a dull tympanic membrane audiogram showed conductive loss and tympanogram showed type b curve he also has enlarged nodes in the right posterior triangle so what is the most probable diagnosis out of these four now here when we see the age of the patient we know that we have been talking about secretory otitis media as a very common pathology in children but here this question i have specifically put to uh, ma make you understand that sometimes the secretory otitis media is also seen in adults though the cause may be totally different uh, from that of children we'll see so this is a 70 year old male patient right side hearing loss dull tympanic membrane conductive type type b so up till this line we can make a clinical diagnosis that this patient is having a right side serous otitis media now one important point here is that generally in adults the serous otitis media if it is unilateral then we should suspect something some mass in the nasopharynx and in uh, children generally secretory otitis media is a bilateral condition now here one more detail is given that he has enlarged lymph nodes in the right posterior triangle so what is the most probable diagnosis so for uh, we'll go one by one so the first option is middle ear tumor it can cause conductive loss dull tympanic membrane and everything except that uh, it is not a very common cause for right posterior triangle nasopharyngeal malignancy this uh, fits into our diagnosis because the patient might be having some malignant mass in the nasopharynx which is the cause for development of the secretory otitis media and also the metastasis of the lymph nodes in the posterior triangle then acoustic neuroma again generally there is no lymphatic metastasis and uh, even the age of the patient does not match with acoustic neuroma tuberculosis of the middle ear tuberculosis generally present as discharging ear or a pale granulations are present the tympanic membrane is most of the times not intact and uh, multiple matted lymph nodes are present in tuberculosis so out of these four the most probable diagnosis which fits into this history should be nasopharyngeal malignancy so the point important here is that in children the adenoids enlarged adenoids or tonsils may be the cause of secretory otitis media but if an adult or an elderly individual develops a secretory otitis media then we should always suspect some malignant mass in the nasopharynx so thank you very much for your uh, patient listening and i have tried to cover most of the important aspects of secretory otitis media giving uh, an example of uh, different types of questions and if you have any queries then uh, please put them in the uh, comment box i'll try to address each and every one thank you very much